me out of the limo, and I, he doesn't remember the incident. He doesn't so wait, did you, did you make out with Ted Nugent? <laughs> oh, cool. that's unbelievably great. <laughs> because all these groupies made fun of me because I was a virgin. <laughs> so I, I was trying to, like, you know, find the heavy metal guy to lose my... I so didn't what, lose my... You, you didn't lose it to him? No, no. I, but I was... I you was, know what? You can do better than Ted Nugent. I was a kid. Oh, yeah, right. I had a really big nose. He's an a-hole. <laughs> I know, but it's funny that he doesn't remember. Hey, thanks for the he call. He doesn't remember. <laughs> well, yeah, I got a good story out of it. 99X, how you're on with Courtney? Hello. Hi. Hello. I love you, Courtney. What is your silver pattern with that accent? Huh? What's your silver pattern? What do you mean? Buttercup, Francis Juan. I like the accent. I, want, I need to know what silver pattern runs in your family. Um, I'm from all over because my dad's in the military. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So Did you have California, a question? California, Georgia, okay. Maryland. Okay, forget it. And it, was, it was a Georgia question. All right. Well, hi. Hi. Um, you know, 20 Years in the Dakota? Uh-huh. Why did you write that? I love that song. That's my favorite song. I, I rewrote it really? for those, those disaster Jane's Addiction shows, and it's really, really good now. I think I'm going to re-record it because I wrote it in two hours. I wrote it like I wrote this one just now, but I put it on a record, and, mm -hmm. I, and I finally rewrote it and made it right. I wrote, I wrote it. It was like this weird Yoko, but I also wanted to steal Hey Jude. I don't know. I've, I love that song. Every time someone comes over to my house, that's the first thing I make them do is listen to that song. I'm going to re-record it. It's the only one I'm going to re-record, but I like it a lot. Thank you, you very much. Are you doing that thing tonight? What Ted thing? Rocks? I'm probably going to um, watch um, Hearts War. <laughs> We're, having a little, <laughs> We're having a little concert tonight called Downtown Rocks. And uh, the Nickelback? And yeah. Jerry Cantrell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hot out, you guys. I know. And I have a stitch that I have to get removed. I had to go to the dentist today, too. Did you, who'd you go to? Did you go to Dr. Goldstein? No. He's great. No, I was supposed to talk to you this morning, but I got put on hold, and then I had to go to the dentist. All right. Well, you said hello, and I, 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 I'm glad you got a chance to talk to Courtney. Thank you. Do you find that a lot of your songs, too, like, uh, you know, the song you're writing now, if it doesn't come out, or that you've written uh, called Hold On To Me, if it doesn't come out, if you don't get your deal worked out and it doesn't come out within the next six months, do you feel that your music is timeless and it doesn't matter if it doesn't come out for two more years? No, they got to be fresh. I really? have a boner for them. Yeah, like, like, we had to try and take that, you know, twice and work on it, and I was starting to get bored of it, so I'm glad we played it when we did. So all the music that, that so you've like written. Celebrity Skin, which cost $3 million, and the same producer produced the $4.3 million corn record. Right. He just keep letting Michael spend that money. I don't know what he's spending on. It wasn't the wall, you know. I think cigars. But uh, he, uh, you know, he, I kept saying, you know, it's the first take. And he kept making me sing like I was, you know, Sheryl Crow or something. Yeah, he's a perfectionist. Yeah, you are a scratch vocal kind of, you know, singer. With the, with the acting, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a first, first You're like Sinatra. I'll give you two take, takes. Two Those takes. are your two choices. No, I, I'm, rely, I'm good on the first take. So that's, you know, that's when my, I get a boner for it. When you, uh, when you sing, I mean, you sing with balls. I mean, you just belt it. No, I sing with ovaries. Okay. With ovaries. <laughs> when you, like, when you were first, uh, start, when you first started singing, were your influences, especially like your stage persona, was it mostly guy guy bands or were they girl bands? No, the reason I hung out with the group is because I wanted to see what, how rock stars, you know, did things. And and when we played the Midtown here, uh -huh. yeah. that Cheap Trick played. Cheap Trick was my first backstage I ever went to. So I saw, like, um, I, I just kept, and I kept going to cheesier stuff, like, you know, what was it? Molly Hatchet and uh -huh. Sammy Hagar. And, you know, I'd get back and I'd sit on these amps and just watch these guys and... And think, you know, why can't I do that? And I was also really good at football. Really? <laughs> yeah, I had my hormones done. I have a lot of testosterone. Just get a football. Did your hormones done? Yeah, like they do a blood panel. Right. Uh -huh. And I actually have a lot of testosterone. Do you? Yes, I do. Right. It doesn't make me, you know. No, it does not. But I, mean, I don't have hair on my chest. No, you do not. Okay. <laughs> we, a lot of people have seen that to know. Yeah. Well, there, yeah. there you go. Let's take a few more because Courtney's sure. got to get All out right. of here soon. All right. 99X, hi, you're on. Hi, uh, this is Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi, I read your Nicole. autobiography. I mean, I don't have enough. Your books. biography by Poppy Z. Bright. Books. Don't do that. Don't. We're not talking about them. She doesn't. She did, you didn't like that book, obviously. I, I, I was. I was in New Orleans. I was a mess. I was mad at that weenie and that band, and I just let her look at some diaries. And I was dumb. So, are you friends with Poppy or not? I'm not. Not friends with her. I just. I did a dumb thing. Oh well, I really, really enjoyed it, and I just really incredibly admire you and your music. You have no idea what it's done for me and, like, so many of my friends. 
thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I'm sorry, I'm jonesing for a smoke, so I'm, I'm not being in. We'll take care of you, Courtney. <laughs> thank you, Nicole. Thank you very much. Okay, I love you. Bye. Thank Thanks you. for the call. Well, God, you've hung she's out here been, all afternoon. Yeah, she's been here all day. 10.30? She, uh, she called us, what, no, first I at 9.30? I called 30? at 8. No. I did, didn't I? 8 to 9. About 9.30. Yeah. Okay. Or she spent a lot of time here. To, she could get through for the first 30 minutes, no, though, because no I, one thought it was her. No, I, I, no, I, I called and he believed me. Oh, okay. Yeah. He bought it right off. Mm -hmm. He didn't fake it, but he put me on hold for a long time. Well, that's what we do here. We put people on hold for a long time. Yeah, I called back and I got first ring. No, I'll, when, take, I'll take one or two more. Okay, when, sure. when do you think? When do you think that you're ready to go out and perform again live? As soon as I get this record done, and um, you know, I have a mediation with the president of the label mm -hmm. this week, and um, there's a few things I can't leave behind. There's a lot of other artists depending on me. I mean, from the Dixie Chicks to Alanis Morissette to BB King's Estate to the Hendrix Estate to, I mean, there's. That literally thousands of, to the Chambers oh, brothers. Tell I me mean, the Dixie Chicks got a bad deal. Listen, they yeah, did. I'm gonna tell you something. All right, when we, you know, I mean, my my uh, my daughter went over to David Geffen's house, who I'm actually friends with, and you know, don't poop where you eat. I, I like him, and mm -hmm. we don't talk about this stuff. But you know, I've known him a long time. And, but uh, she said, "Why does he have so much money?" And I felt like you know, bonfire of the vanities, and I said. Because people like me and your daddy bake him a big cake, and then we get a few crumbs. And the statistician that's in my lawsuit has done over 9,000 audits of recording, you know, and it's all, you know, rich rock stars, my swimming pool is not as big as it. It's so not that. I mean, I'm talking about people. It's not about me. I have money. These are Manolas. So, yeah, okay. But, <laughs> but it's... There is a duty that I have and that Don Henley has picked up as well in doing, which is there are so many people who, like, you know, bands that aren't cool, Rat, Fog Hat, um, you know, things that um, are not groovy and cool, you know, the Gin Blossoms, and those people are going, they can't afford lawyers, and they can't afford audits, and they're owed money to live, and, you know, it, it, they always want me to go on 60 Minutes or Diane Sawyer, and I'm like, why don't we find the people, ask 10 of your staff their favorite songs 10 years ago, and I'll show you nine destitute people who do not have health care. Yeah. And that's really, so if I can get this worked out with Universal, I still have a lobbyist in Sacramento. I have a, a great senator in California um, named John Burton who says, you're the only honest woman in this state. So I, he, he really likes me um, and is going to push this bill through that will affect you know, Axel and I were talking about this Good earlier. Luck. One of the best things on the Internet I is have a link on my page. If you go to 99x.com and go to my page, it says, How Rich Is Your Favorite Rock Star? And it's a link to an article that was written, you know, uh, with you about... Uh, no, by me. By you. Oh, okay, by you about where the money goes in a record deal. Yeah. Yeah, for any band starting out, it's a must-read. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. and it was actually, there was there was a, a an article that Steve Albini, if you remember who he is, wrote mm -hmm. in The Baffler that people think I copped that from. I hate that, it's, you know, so, because the song that you just heard, as you know, was written by Moby and Dave Grohl. Um, I don't write anything myself. Yeah. But, no, actually, <laughs> I, I mentioned 7-Eleven I mentioned in that article as an homage to Albini's math, which was wrong. Um, so I, I know I know so much about legislative intent right now that I just am sick of it. And so it's really fun to just sit here with Rich and rock. You should yep. start your own That's label. A good statement. And say short words. Two eight five five B legislative intent. I, <laughs> have you done that thing where you have to testify in front of, like, hearings uh, yes, and all I've that? Yes, I've been in the California room, but I just ended up tell, of... telling jokes, and Don Henley kept kicking me. Uh, yeah. That's and kinda... then there was, like, Senator Betty, who's kind of a tool of the teacher's union, and she goes to the, there's, like, the seven dwarfs from the record company, and they're, like, big tobacco guys. I mean, uh -huh. they're lying, and she goes, so you guys get kids off the streets, and you teach them how to dance, and you teach them how to sing, and then they want to. Then they get famous, and then they want to leave? And I was just like, jeez, Senator Bay. Um, and then I insulted her publicly, and she left the committee. So that's good. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> having a big mouth is a good thing. Don't I know it. Uh, good, I'm glad. Yeah, okay, we can share that. Yo, okay, yeah. Two more calls? Yeah, two more calls. Two more, and then i got to get my stitch out. All okay. right, here we go. Yeah, we can